Ovechkin specifically endorsed Putin's invasion by proclaiming it was done to save Ukrainian children from fascism, echoing the Kremlin propaganda lies. Then in 2017, Ovechkin got even more deeply involved in politics. He formed what he called the Putin team and invited other Russian athletes and celebrities to help re-elect the Russian president. Largely unnoticed mm -hmm. has this storyline gone, I think, for many, in particular, hockey fans. Yeah, because we've talked a lot about the fact that there have been issues with the NHL's celebration of pride and inclusion of the LGBTQ community. But what about this whole Putin problem? Nobody's talking about that. I suspect it's because you have the big star players like Ovechkin. Oop, we're not going to yeah. talk about it if it impacts somebody like I that. I suspect you're right. But there is someone who has been talking about it and in fact just wrote an op-ed for the Globe and Mail. He is a criminology professor at uh, the University of Fraser Valley named Dr. Mark Kirsten and he wrote this fascinating piece about the NHL and its war crimes problem. problem. So we thought let's bring him in and let's dig into this. Uh, Mark Kirsten, thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks very much for having me and thanks for highlighting this important story. Well, I mean, let's let you get right into it. How is the NHL handling or not handling the Putin problem? Yeah, it's very much the latter, right? It's it's not handling the Putin problem. I think it's hoping that it can kind of set this issue aside. And of course, it can't because the war in Ukraine and the Russian invasion and the war crimes and crimes against humanity are affecting all of us. They're, uh, they're a real threat to our global order and to our basic sense of decency and the thing that we want in such times is for people with influence and power to stand up and say we're going to stand on the side of those who are experiencing serious human rights violations and the nhl has just decided it's not going to do that and the way one of the ways perhaps the most drastic way in which it's failing to at least at the very least stand with victims and survivors of human rights violations in ukraine is by promoting the goal, you know, the, the attempt of um, Alexander Ovechkin, its biggest Russian star, as everyone knows, uh, promoting his, um, his efforts to beat Wayne Gretzky's uh, all-time goal-scoring record, which, of course, is a remarkable record. But in doing that, it's pointing to all of Mr. Ovechkin's social media, including his Instagram account. And when you go to that Instagram account, there you'll see... Uh, Alexander Ovechkin smiling with Vladimir Putin, somebody who the International Criminal Court has now issued an arrest warrant for on charges of war crimes. I think it's insulting to people. I think it's insulting to Ukrainians, obviously. Yeah. But I actually, frankly, think it should be insulting to all of us and to anyone who thinks, you know, we should be standing at the very least not obstructing the basic rights of people. Uh, we shouldn't expect that the NHL or hockey players are going to be leading the cause on justice and accountability. But we should be able to expect that when mass atrocities are happening or human rights violations are happening, they'll at least not pose with the primary perpetrator of those violations and stand up and say, hey, this is wrong. So yeah. it, along those lines, <laughs> the reasons why you might surmise, I guess, that Commissioner Gary Bettman is not holding Ovechkin to account for some of these visuals that we've shared here today that frankly are shocking and, and should be at the forefront, as you said. So much is about, hey, what about Gretzky's record? And it's just, it seems to be all about the brand and all about the money and just keep moving it forward and make the dollars, even when you see that that sign with Ovechkin holding that sign justifying yeah. Putin's invasion of Ukraine. Like, why is this not a headline? Is it because we have so much noise? Yeah, and why is it not a headline now? But that sign is from 2014. Yeah. Russia yeah. first invaded and took away parts of Ukraine Crimea. and committed yeah. war crimes and crimes against humanity in 2014. We're so focused on what's happened over the last year that sometimes we forget that these atrocities and rights violations and war have been happening for nine years, not one year, nine years. And that Ovechkin, uh, Ovechkin wasn't just not speaking up against Russian atrocities last year. He's been silent on the matter for nine years. You know, Russia's implicated in war crimes and crimes against humanity, the use of chemical weapons, targeting humanitarian aid workers, et cetera, in Syria since at least around 2012, 2013. Right. It invaded, as I mentioned, Ukraine in 2014. And it's one thing to just not do anything. 
It's one thing to remain silent, as many Russian players have, and many sports players generally do in the wake of mass atrocities or human rights violations or war. It's one thing to remain silent. It's another thing altogether to be part of the propaganda machine, justifying and legitimizing these people who commit mass atrocities. And it's worthwhile taking a moment to think about what are the allegations against Putin at the International Criminal Court? They're of stealing children from Ukrainian families and orphanages and yeah. forcibly transferring them to Russian families. I mean, if that doesn't make the NHL or hockey players say, hold on a second, this is worth me breaking my silence. This is worth me being a little bit uncomfortable. Yeah. And we have a real problem. The league, the at least, though, right? right? Like Gary Bettman. Mm -hmm. There's like, let's let's call this out where it could, the buck could stop with Gary Bettman. Well, and let's broaden the, let's like open up the lens and talk about how the NHL is doing just in regards to promoting basic human rights. Yeah. What do you think? Well, as I wrote in the piece, you know, I, I don't think its record is particularly good. It is a laggard on these issues. Um, Sadly, and, and I think we should wake up a little bit to this. I'm a massive hockey fan. I play fantasy hockey. I know, I know, right? Sportscaster. I mean, exactly, right? And, and you know, being Canadian has, uh, I'm, a, I'm the first born Canadian in my family, and it's always meant I love hockey, but it also means I believe in human rights and the basic yeah. dignity of others, including people I don't know. And it pains me to know that because of money or because of discomfort or because of corporate sponsorships, I, as a Canadian, can't have a hockey world in which basic human rights and caring about what happens on the ice is possible. And I, I mean, we can broaden this to what's happening with, you know, the LGBTQ 2S plus community, how slow the NHL was on uh, Black Lives Matter and addressing horrendous violence against uh, black uh, people in the United right. States. But one thing I wanted to note is that the NHL and its teams are, in a sense, giving excuses for their own players. And we're seeing this in Russia. They consistently say, hey, you know, if someone like Ovechkin came out and said something against Putin, his life would be threatened. Or if any other Russian players came out and said something, maybe their families would be threatened. But one, the record shows that's not true. Putin doesn't go after celebrities or their families because it would ruin his reputation, right? They're popular people in Russia. And two, it really begs the question, why is the NHL putting forward excuses for its hockey players as opposed to letting people like yourselves or people in the media or people who care asking directly, hey, why won't you take the picture of you and Vladimir Putin down? Aren't right. you worried about what that communicates to victims? Because it seems pretty clear it's saying they don't matter and goal scoring records do. Isn't that just the truth? Uh, you know what? This is a fascinating conversation, and I feel like we could carry it on. We could. <laughs> for we could. Uh, about a half an hour to another hour, but I loved what you did, and I love the fact that you are sort of opening us all up, opening our minds to have this conversation, because I think it's important, and I think we'll probably get you back on again and broaden this out. But, uh, Mark Kirsten, thank you so much for your time and your insight. Thanks. Thanks to you. Thanks for creating the space to have this discussion. It's it's obviously belated, but as you say, it's an important one. Uh, and it's important that we're allowed to talk about these issues and ask yeah. these questions, because that's how we're going to move forward to a world again in which ho hockey and human rights can go hand in hand. 100 percent. Thank uh, you for shining some light on yeah. it for us. And, and as Linda said, come back and join us, because I think we should dive into like the Olympic piece of this as well. Oh, this isn't just exclusive to the NHL. Another conversation. All right. Dr. Thank Mark Kirsten, thank you so much. Very much. Uh, Dr. Kirsten is a criminology professor at the University of Fraser Valley. That was fascinating. It's a great op-ed piece right? that went by way too fast. <laughs> you know what? Coming up later in the show, a bunch of angry white guys are boycotting Budweiser. Ah. Boycotting Budweiser. They're switching to Coors over that brand Another being at two. Beer. <laughs> so funny, right? right? Um, what the hell is wrong with people mm. segment? We'll have you. And coming up next, uh, complete transformation. A Vancouver man makes history as one of the first male trans models to walk the international catwalk. Crow Kian joins us in studio next.